we're the only creatures who would live in this transactional way. Can you imagine if that tree over there was to say, oh, okay, you've breathed enough oxygen for me, off you go, breathe from another tree now. It's a good thing trees don't behave in the same way that we do. Or can you imagine if those birds who are talking up there, which have a conversation with each other, and one of them says to the other, hey Martha, have you pecked the ground for 30 minutes? No, I, I didn't pick the ground for 30 minutes. Yeah, if you don't pick the ground for 30 minutes, you're not going to get your grain and you're not going to get your worm. Martha panics and she flies down to the ground and starts picking the ground. properly uh, wash my hands, right, for soap, and then underground, into the water table, into the underground water aquifer. This is where we get all the well water from, whenever you have a hand pump, and you have, whenever you have a well, this is where you get the water from. So it's very important to put water, water back here. But because of many situations of Sarnia Forest, uh, this process isn't happening properly, because of many, many years of soil erosion and deforestation, uh, water, there's no access to water. That's why the tree, trees over here were not growing properly. So water conservation is a big part of what we're doing at Sarnia Forest. So, in order to live this every single day, what we do is we try to conserve water in our day-to-day -day practice. So, for example, this is how we wash our hands at Sadaqwar. We don't have things. And this is not me trying to appear longer. This is just the reality of human history. Because if you open the newspaper, right now we're not even talking about it, but for three years we had COVID. Right? And you guys remember what happened before COVID? We had the burning of the Amazon. Yes. Yeah. We had the burning of the Australian bush. During the COVID pandemic, there was all kinds of stories of police brutality in the U.S., right? People, civilians getting killed. And in India, we had stories of caste-based violence, gender-based violence. This piece of land that you're sitting on right now used to have tropical wet climate. And then it moved northwards towards the equator. I know what you guys are thinking. You didn't come here for a geology lesson, but here we are. <laughs> it moves north towards the equator, and at the equator, ex it experienced equatorial wet climate. So that was when this forest was an equatorial wet forest. And then, about 20 million years ago, it collided with the Indian, uh, the Asian. We have 50 families of four people. Uh, you have 50 different sets of. Yeah. You have 50 different, uh, you have 50 different sets of pots and pans that need to be cleaned and chopped and prepared. You have 50 different sets of waste and leftovers. You have 50 different sets of menus that need to be created. You have all these people that are making food individually. Food individually, right? Nobody's having conversations. Nobody's talking to each other. Um, and so there's a big system right? And also, there's a system aspect here. Design. And they design in such a way that they send heat directly to the bottom of the vessel. Now if you compare this with a regular gas burner, you have a stand, you have a vessel sitting on top of the stand, mm -hmm. then you have flames going all over the place. And the resource that we're often using is... Gas. Yes, gas. LPG. Gas. Liquefied petroleum gas. Mm -hmm. So that is something, and how do we get that? Where do we get that from? Pardon? Yeah, exactly. We're getting this from fossil fuels. So that means we have to dig up the earth, get all of these things out of the soil, and then burn that.
big tent. Um, it's, it's totally normal. Uh, but it has its limitations, it has downsides, where you need all these things wherever you go. So by coming here, you are questioning a lot of these assumptions. You are questioning, saying, you know, I'm here for a, a week, a two, a two weeks, I'm here for a month, I'm here for six months, I'm here for a year. I can live without these things for this time. It's not a problem. And then we, when you live without these things for a while, you slowly acclimatize, you adjust, and you realize you actually don't need to eat in your life very much. So we have um, not that many batteries. You know, we use our biggest uses of electricity are actually water related. We use them to pump water. Our pump, uh, we have a, a two horsepower pump. It's very strong, it's 1500 watts. And we have a water filter, which is an RO filter. It's, but it's an industrial size filter. So it's very big, it takes a lot of power. So these two are the biggest uses of electricity. Sometimes we use a grinder to make idli batter or dosa batter. Sometimes we use uh, a mixie for a few things in our kitchen. But most things operate without electricity over here. If we don't have power, the biggest issue for us will just be that we will have...